All praises is due to my Creator. I give all the praises to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Today we're going to talk about Absalom, a type of Abdullah. Abdullah is the Prophet Muhammad, and it's also a picture of the Arabs, the Arabian nation, Ishmael. You're going to learn and have a greater respect for the Bible because there is a picture of your prophet, the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And this is all going to take place in the book of Samuel. Now, you need to read this stuff on your own. I'm online, so therefore, I'm going to do commentary. Not reading all these chapters. You got to read that on your own if you're serious about learning. Now, let's get started. We are in 2 Samuel, and this is during the time when David is not keeping the law. He has drama in his house because of his sin with Bath Sheba. His family is falling apart because of this new girl. Sounds familiar. <laughs> this Arabian nation called Bath Sheba is the reason for all this chaos and confusion going on in this royal family in the house of David. Now, what happened then is happening now. Today, the Arabs are trying to keep something that belongs to David. The religion, Islam, the Kaaba, the whole shebang, all belongs to Israel. Now, let's go back to what I said about David not keeping the law right now. I am that David that's not keeping the law. Why? Because I have to revise it. I have to revise the law. This is my celebration. I'm like David. He was supposed to be killed for adultery. But that didn't happen. He was supposed to be killed for murder. But that didn't happen. Why not? Because he has the eraser. He has to rewrite the law. All right? Now, let's get to 2 Samuel 14 and 25. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty from the sole of his feet, even to the crown of his head. There was no blemish in him. Now, as you can see, the women on this cover, these are shocked Arabs. And this is going into Absalom. Now, women go crazy for Abdullah. This is the prophet Muhammad. This is the prophet Muhammad. Absalom is a picture of the most perfect prophet. And it is the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. This is not Jesus. Why? Because Absalom has children. <laughs> okay? And let's, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit. The prophet Muhammad is seen right here in the Bible. Only this happens in the house of David. I just showed you. Why Absalom? Because he's an Arab. <laughs> All right. Absalom is going into Abdullah. Whom we say peace be upon him too. You see you can spell Shalom in Salam in Absalom. This is Absalom is Abdullah, the prophet Muhammad. All right. 
He's a son of Al Maddie. Let me let me tell you something. Everybody has been wearing my clothes. Everybody has been wearing my coat. Everybody has had my jacket on. Everybody has been using my mantle. I'm the actual owner of this mantle and of this coat of many colors. Okay. My kingdom was supposedly taken by Jesus. My kingdom was supposedly taken by the Prophet Muhammad. My kingdom was supposedly taken by Paul. I mean, what's going on? All these men are after David's kingdom. Here we have Ahithophel. Then we have his son, Absalom. Then we have his another his other son Adonijah. All of these men are after my throne. You see, my name is Lamonti Almati, the Almighty Father. I am here. And I am the David. All of my sons are trying to take my kingdom. The Arabs, we have so-called Israel. They even accusing the prophet Isa of trying to have my kingdom. I mean, what's going on? This is what this whole story is about. Like I said, you got to read it on your own time. But I'm breaking down something to you and we'll get back to the story because there's some good things in here. But bottom line, this is what's going down. Al Maddy Lamonti Almighty is the father, is the author of the Bible. He is the first Mohammed. He is the first person who ever prayed. He is the first person who ever sung. He is God Almighty. And he always had a God. And that was the Lord of the worlds. Allah was teaching me how to be a God with my first planet, Earth. Clay. We call it earth because we call it ear. And I am the ear that hears. Okay. So with that being said. We had some issues. With Allah having a son. That reached the Lord of the heavens. Reached the Lord of the worlds. And so therefore. Earth is mine. I'm really the father of everybody on this earth. Okay? So with that being said, I had to come down here. Alright? We have accusations of Jesus trying to take my kingdom. We have accusations of the Prophet Muhammad trying to take my kingdom, which is not true on the real Prophet Muhammad. Alright? All these people have been trying to keep my coat. I am al Madi. I'm the ruler of the Arabs. And Absalom, he was a picture of the nation of Islam trying to keep something that does not belong to them. The Prophet Muhammad even told you about a black boy with skinny legs taking the Kaaba apart stone by stone. And I am that guy. I am the black man with the skinny legs. Okay, I'm 150 pounds wet. 
<laughs> That's with all my clothes off 150 pounds. I am the little black skinny boy with the skinny legs and the hay beef that will take the combo apart because I lot talked to me about that two months ago on my bed before I ever read the hay beef. No, I don't know Arabic, but I am Al Madi and I'm here. So now, like I said, this is my party. I'm here to revise the law. David is not keeping nah, nah leg of the law right now. <laughs> David is not keeping the law right now. All right. David is about to have a visit from, from Nathan. Every time a prophet got out of line, every time a king got out of line, they got a visit from al -Madi. In the form of another prophet. Alright. So. Let's now. Go. To. 2 Samuel. 14 and 26. And when he pulled his head. That means he shaved it. For it was at every. Year's end. That he pulled it. Because the hair was heavy on him. Therefore he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. And unto Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of a fair countenance. Now, now we got to talk about... Mr. Abdullah. Mr. Absalom was something else. He's a picture of the nation of Ishmael. All right, there was another guy by the name of Amnon. He actually was his brother. They all were brothers. We have Amnon, and then we have Absalom. And then we have a sister who was a royal sister in the house of David. They all was royalty. And her name was Tamar. Now Amnon had a crush on his sister Tamar. And so he forced himself upon her. Even though he could have asked permission to marry her. And she insisted that. But instead, he forced himself upon her, and then he put her out. He got the panties and put her out. And her brother, their brother, Absalom, heard of it and was pissed. And so he played it off. But he was all the time plotting on how to murder his brother Amnon. And he did. He did. And that is a picture of Abdullah, the Prophet Muhammad, the religion of Islam, walking around with a dead body. They have a stone on the corner of their Kaaba. And that is a picture of the man they murdered. His name is Lamonti. He's actually a stone. His name is Lamonti, which rhymes with Almati or Almonti, which rhymes with Almighty. He is the Father. He is the author of the Bible. A picture of him is seen in the life of Bilal. He is the first prayer. He is the man in the seventh heaven on top. Just like Bilal was on top of the Kaaba. And so the Arabs have a dead body. And they have to face it. They have to face it. They have to point to it. Because they murdered that man. That murder was Amnon. That man was Lamonti. That man was Almaty. That man is the stone the builders rejected. Now that makes sense. Now that makes sense. That makes sense. Everything I just brought out makes perfect sense. Abdullah 
is seen in Absalom. Why he has the hair. Why everybody thinks the Prophet Muhammad owns Islam. And there was no blemish in this man. He was perfect. He was flawless. When you mention Absalom, the women go, oh! You know what I mean? This man was perfect. This is a picture of the Prophet Muhammad. It is not a picture of Jesus. No, 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 no. I wouldn't be in Islam if this guy was Jesus. This guy is the Prophet Muhammad. If it wasn't for the Prophet Muhammad, I would still be in Christianity. So this guy is not Jesus. Absalom, the most flawless looking man in the Bible. This man is not a picture of Jesus. He's a picture of the Arabian Muhammad who almost through the nation of the Arabs today almost took the kingdom away from David because this is almost at the end 34 is almost over and the Arabs have had the religion of Islam ever since 2000 I was 18 years old I could have had it if there would have been a prophet if there would have been a real prophet around at the time of 2000 could have came and crowned me but there was none so they've had that religion that was borrowed for this whole time and this is the reason why in life we have things like loans, bills, car payments, car loans, things that we have to return. The Bible is full of stories of things that have to be returned. These things are part of life. And so Absalom, man, this man represents the Arabian nation that almost had Islam forever. And that's exactly who Absalom is. He is that man that almost took his father's kingdom. He almost took his daddy's kingdom. He almost took Almaty's kingdom. And we're going to get him back. We're going to have to do all things in a righteous manner. Now Absalom. He took ten. Of his. Dad's wives. Of David's wives. And he had sex with them. In the sight of the sun. Oh. Let me tell you something. Allah. Will rectify. Al Madi. In one night. And when I say rectify, I mean rectify, rectify, you know. He's going to rectify. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. Y'all took 10 from the house of David. I'm taking 10 from Ishmael. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Okay. In David's day. They had horses, messengers, ships, boats. But today we have technology. We have electricity. We have Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi. And we're going to find the best of the best. Ten dimes from the Arabian nation. And it's going down. And it's all in the Bible. This is all ordained in the Bible. Absalom took 10 of his dad's concubines and had sex with them. Guess where? Guess where? Guess where? On top of the roof. Okay, so everybody can see. Okay. And let me tell you something. Allah is so wise, he gave me 
the location of the Kaaba and the whole plan of what he wanted me to do, where he wanted me to position it at, what he wanted me it to face. He told me all that stuff like almost two months ago. He told me that he told me these things. Okay. I remember I got so excited. I actually just faced it in prayer and prayed. <laughs> like the dumbass. <laughs> I just faced it and prayed, man. I was just so excited I got those instructions on what to do with the Kabbalah. Before I even read the Hadith. Before I even read the Hadith. Okay. This is going to be the Sa'i al-Bakari, 1595, 1596 chapter, the demolishing of the Kaaba, narrated by Abin Abbas. May Allah be pleased with them. The Prophet, may Allah be pleased with them, said, as if I am looking at him, a black person with thin legs, plucking out the stones of the Kaaba one after another. Narrated by Abu Ruari. May Allah be pleased with him. The Allah's messenger said, May Allah be pleased with him. The thin legged man from Ethiopia will demolish the Kaaba. <laughs> so we have two different narrations of a skinny black boy demolishing the Kaaba. Oh, it's real. Now, this is going into the race when it says Ethiopian. That's why some people think I'm Jamaican. Some people think I'm Ethiopian. Some people think whatever relation, whatever nationality they think. But that whole nationality is going into this black person. Okay? And I was receiving the directions, the instructions, the revelation for the Kaaba before I even read this in the Sa'i al-Bakari. Okay? So, when I'm teaching, it's because Allah has anointed me to teach. You can learn something. And types and shadows was one of the key things that has helped me to understand everything in the world. It's through the Solomon concept in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, uh, the emergency numbers. Okay? But then Absalom kills his own brother. So now... He has to pay the price. So now he's not keeping a law. And now he has a daughter by the name of Tamar. And she's fair. First it was Amnon that wanted this Tamar. He was drooling all over his sister. And he wanted her. And he has some. And now it's Mr. Abdullah. It is Mr. Absalom rocking with Tamar. Why is this? Because everybody wants to wear what belongs to Daddy Al Mahdi. Everybody wants my girl, everybody wants my religion. Everybody wants my daughters. Everybody wants what belongs to Al Mahdi. Now think about Joseph. Think about Joseph. Right there in Genesis, we have a Joseph. His dad, Jacob, made him a coat of many colors. His brothers were envious. Why? Because everybody wanted the coat. This is the man that was born in St. Joseph's Hospital. I can't help 
I'm not trying to make it about me. It is about me. I'm not trying to make it about me. It is about me. This is all going into the man that was born in St. Joseph's Hospital, 700 Broadway, Almaty. The stone that once was whiter than milk that became black because of the sins of the people, the real Jesus story. The real Jesus story. The prophet Esau will die first. And the last two witnesses will die last. But yeah, don't think I'm trying to make it about me. It is about me. And the Joseph story is a picture of all the prophets, all the messengers being accused. And that's why we're going into judgment. It's like... Everybody wanted to be king. And they killed Mufasa. They killed the father, al -Mahdi. Okay. That's what that whole story is going into. All right. Everybody wants to be king. Everybody wants to be king. Everybody always wants what they can't have. You always want what you can't have. And that's why we had to keep all of the prophets little, including the prophet Isa. We had to make him a servant of servants. Why? Because his dad is big. All right. We had to keep all the prophets little because the big prophet is not a lie. It's al -Mahdi. All right. The ultimate servant now you can see what this is all going into this is for those who have studied the story of Amnon this is for those who have studied the story of Absalom now you know what this story is all going into everybody wants what doesn't belong to them Tamar belongs to me Amnon wanted Tamar. He couldn't have her. He's dead. Absalom wanted Tamar. He couldn't have Tamar. He couldn't enjoy Tamar, his daughter. He was killed. Who is Tamar? Tamar actually means the arm. The man with the tat on his arm. Or the woman with the tat on her arm. Tamar. The ram. The army. The Mary. And Tamar ultimately goes in tomorrow. The day. Everybody wants to be al -Mahdi. And they made it seem like Jesus was al -Mahdi. They made it seem like the prophet Muhammad was al -Mahdi. Nobody is al -Mahdi but al -Mahdi. Now I'm going to break that down because that was advanced. And I'm going to say it in a way you can understand it. They tried to make Jesus seem like he was me. He's not me. They tried to make the prophet Muhammad seem like he was me. He's not me. They tried to make them all the prophet of Deuteronomy 18 and 18. The prophet Isa is not the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. And the prophet Muhammad is not the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. Why? Because he's not an Israelite. That promise was to Israelites. And so that's why we have these stories in the Bible. This is why the Bible is the number one most sold book. It is full of power. It is full of prophecies and stories of the future that haven't even happened yet. So here we have this man who is Absalom. And he is a man who has the most beauty. All 
all the women wanted him. He has the most hair on his head. Why? Because he's a picture of not only the Prophet Muhammad, but he's a picture of the Prophet Isa. Because the Prophet Isa was the heir. He is the Messiah in the Quran. And according to the Bible, Esau was the hairy man. He was the heir. He was the one who was supposed to get the double portion but what happened Jacob got it and that's how it is in between the prophet Isa and Al Mahdi Al Mahdi gets the inheritance because Al Mahdi is the root and the offspring you see Al Mahdi is the A in the Z this is the reason why David had many sons that was royal but they didn't have that A and that Z chromosome this is the Solomon okay just like the Solomon of David's day he was the son that had that A and that Z chromosome and that chromosome was ultimately in the father Okay, and the sad truth is, if anybody owns Islam, guess who owns Islam? It is the Arabian Mohammed. Okay, that's why he has a lot of hair on his head. Because Absalom is a picture of the Arabian Mohammed. All right, now let's go to some other stories that's going to prove that this man was a picture of the Arabian Mohammed. Now let's go to verse 27 again. And unto Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar, she was a woman of fair countenance. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. That's the truth. You see, the prophet Mohammed, he never met me. He never met me. He got the revelation of the Quran through the angel Gabriel. Now let's keep going. Therefore Absalom sent forth Joab to have sent him to the king. But he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Because this is what's actually going on in the story. David was visited by a woman of Tekoa. And this story of the woman of Tekoa is actually a metaphor. And it's talking about the last witness, the female. But in this story, Joab puts this woman up to go and talk to David and to feign herself like she was someone else. And he put the words in this woman's mouth. And so this woman makes up this story about two sons and one son dead, one son's in trouble. And she wants protection for the son. And David promises protection for the son. But really, Joe put her up to it. And David is being a hypocrite. Because he gave her some advice. That he's not following for his two sons. Amnon and Absalom. Because Absalom is on the run. And Amnon is dead. And so therefore now David is forced to make his son come home. But then David. He 
he does not see his son face. David is still pissed off about his son Amnon. Why is David pissed off? Because one of his sons killed one of his sons. And so he's like, you can't see my face. And the real truth about this is this right here. Everybody think the Arabian prophet Muhammad is the real Muhammad. That's why Absalom could not see the king's face. Because he killed Ammon. Who is Amnon? Amnon is who? Lamonti. Daquan. You see, Absalom has a dead body. He has a dead body. And that dead body is Daquan. Everybody thinks that the Arab Mohammed is the real Mohammed. And he's a picture of Absalom. That's why Absalom killed Ammon. Or Lamonti. Or Almati. See the initials? A-M and Amnon. Alright. Absalom killed. He killed Ammon. He killed Almati. Because he got all the people thinking that he is the real Mohammed. And then in Al Mahdi ain't nothing but a, a, a Imam. So that's why Absalom couldn't see his face. <laughs> that's amazing revelation right here in the house of David. And I can keep going on and on and on in this story. But I just want to let you know what's going on. The reason why David had problems with his sons trying to take his throne is because everybody is confused. The world is confused on who is the ruler of the world. And I'm here to tell you the ruler of the world, the ruler of the Arabs is al -Mahdi. The Prophet Muhammad never even seen my face. I am most closest to Allah. He never even met me. The Quran was given to him through an angel, Gabriel. And he doesn't have my kingdom either. Okay? The Prophet Muhammad don't have my kingdom. And he knew this. That's why he lived poor for Solomon. Because Solomon was a metaphor. And Solomon is me. It's not the Prophet Muhammad's fault necessarily. It's the people. The people are confused. They do not understand the Quran, the Hadiths, and the Bible. And that's why I'm here to teach. The Prophet Muhammad was like an Absalom. That's all he was. He was a servant. Everybody think he's the heir because he has the hair. Right now, the Arabian Prophet's face is on the most fastest growing religion. That's why Absalom has the most beauty. Okay, he has the most beauty. Everybody is flocking to Islam. He has the hair. Everybody thinks he's owning it. Same thing with Isa. The people are Jesus fanatics, man. They on crack. No powers, no miracles. They'll tell you Jesus is God. They'll tell you Jesus loves you. They'll barely mention the Father. 
Um, the prophet Isa is like a Absalom. And we're dealing with this. We're dealing with this issue. We're dealing with this issue. Everybody wants to be king. But that's not true. That's why Al Maddie's here to teach. And I'm here to bring you the truth. Now, I can keep going, but I want to just skip on down to verse 30. Therefore, he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and ye have barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Because back to what I was explaining to you about Absalom. Absalom is pissed. Here his dad told him to come home, and he can't even see his face. So now what's happening? He's tearing up the place. The Arabs are tearing up the place. Why? Because they do not own Islam. They never met me. They never seen my face. Their prophet has never seen my face. The religion of Islam was a religion where they were receiving a prophet in the name of a prophet. They were receiving Al Mahdi in the name of Muhammad. But now I'm here. I'm here in the flesh. I'm the black stone. I'm Lamonti that once was whiter than milk. But I'm here in the flesh to recreate the tribes of Israel from my loins. So going on. Then Joab arose and came to Absalom and said unto him, Wherefore have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent unto thee, Come Hither, that I may send thee to the king, to say, Wherefore am I come from Gusher? It hath been good for me to have been there still. And now, therefore, let me see the king's face. And if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. Because it's my place. Only al Madi has the place to put the precious sword down on the Arabians. All right? And that's going to happen. It's going to happen. So Joab came to the king and told him, and when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Absalom. Okay, so now the Arabs are going to kiss the rock. You see, the Bible says, kiss the sun. Lest he be angry with you. And the Bible is so full of metaphors. Absalom is a picture of so many characters and he plays so many different roles and right now in this role he is playing Al Mahdi all right because his daddy kissed him <laughs> the stone kissed him Okay, because what's awesome about this whole thing is this is a picture of the future. This is a picture of the future. He's mad that one of his sons killed one of his other sons. And Allah is mad that the world doesn't know who the real Muhammad is. It's not Absalom. 
No, it's not. It's Al Matty. And that's why he's bringing me to the forefront with the knowledge he's even showing me this stuff. Now let's go to 2 Samuel 15. And we're going to deal with the real Lion King story. Right now, I've been telling y'all the true Lion King story. And everybody wants to be king. Everybody wants to be king. Here we have Simba. Here we have Jesus. Here we have the prophet Muhammad. Here we have all of these people, even today in modern history. Everybody wants to be king. But only one can be king. And that is El Mahdi. That is the father. That is the daddy. Verse 1, And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, that Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said, Moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which have any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. So now you can feel the rhythm of the world, and you can hear the song Lion King in that. Oh, that I were made judge in the land. Oh, that I were made king. That is the whole problem with this world. Because we've made everybody king but God the Father. But don't worry, I'm here. I'm here to be crowned. Going on. Let's elaborate a little bit. Absalom, standing outside of the gate, cock blocking is what we would call it. This dude is outside of the gate blocking all of the king's matters. They trying to bow down as it is written. Every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will confess that I am Lord. They trying to bow down and show reverence and he, he telling them to get up and, 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 and they kissing his hand. All right. So what happened in the religion of Islam was it destroyed the reverence of the father, al Mahdi, the black cobblestone that they post to kiss, the black stone that takes away sin. They don't have no reverence for it because they stuck on Absalom. Why? Because Absalom stole the hearts of the men. And that's what ex exactly happened in Arabian Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, through his people, not him by himself, but through his people, Lacking knowledge of the scriptures stole the hearts of the world and they put the face of Islam, even though the prophet Muhammad never put his picture up on Islam, he forbid it that they still gave him the title. And so it stopped the reverence, the bowing down. And that's going to happen. Every knee is going to bow. And that's why Bilal was on top of the Kaaba. Okay. The Arabs had to be on the flow. Y'all had to be on the flow. Because we have to bring back that reverence um, of Israel back. As it is written. I 
will make them who call themselves Jews bound before you. And I will let them know that I loved you. And I will make them worship before your feet. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. All right. There's a VIP section in the heavenly kingdom that is only for the Israelites with their names on the gates. And I am here to recreate new Israel coming from my loins. And there you have it. I gave you some homework. You need to read all of this. You need to read all of this because I'm going to put together a real nice series and I'm going to go in depth on this, on this, because this whole story is full of nuggets. And what you just learned was the Arabians are in judgment for trying to keep something that doesn't belong to them currently. And... Absalom is a picture of the Arabs and ultimately a picture of the Prophet Muhammad Abdullah, the man with the hair, the man with the ownership of Islam currently by the people who are unlearned. And there's a scripture that was sticking out and I want to read it. I want to read it. It basically... Um, Confirms what I'm saying. Yeah, but right here in Second Samuel fifteen ten, and with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they were in their simplicity, and they went not anything. And Absalom sent, but Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. See, this just confirms what I just said. Like, the people of today, the scholars of today, their knowledge is on a level that is below average. And they don't even have enough understanding to know that the ruler of the Arabs is black. They lack that common sense. So the people that followed the Arabian Mohammed and who will continue to follow the Arabian Mohammed after Al Mahdi is crowned will be those who are simple and lack simplicity and those who are unknowledgeable. Okay, because right now we're going to shift. You're going to see a teeter totter pop off. You're going to see people start running and embracing the black Maddie. But then you're going to see people who are simple in their knowledge and don't know anything. They're going to still idolize the whitish, reddish Mohammed, who was a servant, peace be upon him, who was not the ultimate heir. I tell you this all the time and I love telling this story, this analogy of how it is in heaven. In heaven, you have the two, like throwing up the peace sign. You have Allah and then you have the reader or the prophet or the messenger or the mantle or the spokesman or the ambassador, however you put it. It's only the two. That's it. And it's always been that way. In that two, in that al in that messenger, you have an heir. And one heir was revealed to me. And that is the last witness. So it's double. Okay. 
But Allah is one. Allah is not a reader. Allah is one. And that's how it works in the prophethood of Israel. We ultimately had only Aaron as the prophet. And we had Moses as the God. That's how it worked. But then, because of death, only in Israel we had successors. That's why in Islam there is no successor. There's no successors. There's no bloodline successors of people um, making themselves um, go by a chart to be imams. No, they did that stuff on their own. There, there was no one who succeeded the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Because you guys are not royal. You guys are not heirs. You guys are servants. Okay? It was like, okay, I'm about to pass the football to you. You not in my land. But throw it over there to the corner of my land. All right? It was like, let me walk through your land. Let me walk through your land. That's all it was. With the nation of Islam in Arabia, it was like, let me walk through your land. Let me walk through your land. Hey, I just need to walk through your land. I just need to walk through your land. I just need to use your people. I just need to use your servants. That's it. They get their wages if they remain faithful and hold on to al -Mahdi. Those who died believing in Allah and Muhammad as the one and only messenger with good works, when they touch me in sincerity, they'll be good. But for you that are still alive and the stone is here, woe to you. My skin might cause you to offend. My skin, by me not being related to the Arabia, Mohammed, might cause you to stumble. It is. Because your knowledge is poor in metaphors. That might cause you to stumble. And so you're going to reject that Mohammed. You're going to reject that ultimate Mohammed because you reject al -Mahdi. This is who y'all was receiving before 1982. After, after 1982 and the knowledge hit me a couple months ago, now I'm here. So you're going to reject everything, all your rewards. You're going to reject it all. By rejecting me. Because I am the stone the builders rejected. Jesus said my father. Which is in heaven. Is the only one who knows the end. And I am al -Mahdi, And I told you that's 2034 September. September 16th to be exact. Okay. Jesus also said. The stone which my builders rejected. That same stone. Is going to be the chief cornerstone. And wadala, right on the corner of your Kaaba, you have a stone that used to be white, that's black, that's surrounded by the silver, and there's a pillar right in front of it. Okay? That's a picture of Al Mahdi surrounded by the silver, surrounded by the virgins, right here in. California residing actually on West E <laughs> because you know what the sun the S-U-N according to the Quran has risen upon you from the West and al Mahdi came from the West as judgment I'm the stone 
I am here. And we winding down, we wrapped it up. There's much more I can go into detail on. And maybe in the future I will. I will. But the bottom line of everything I brought out is that everybody wanted what ultimately belonged to Almaty. Everybody worshipped the messenger instead of the source of the message. And that was a common problem with human beings. We always look at what we can see and ignore what we can't see. And what we couldn't see is now visible. The light is here. The light is shining. And we give all the praises to Allah, the Lord of the worlds.